What's going on guys, Vlad with eeenthusiast.com here. In today's video, we're gonna be learning how to make a scrollable menu for your projects. So what I've uh, essentially done is I've taken a real world example. So at my job, I actually work with a lot of devices which have a two line LCD screen. You'll see an example on your screen right now, which is the PowerFlex 4 slash 40 uh, variable frequency drive. And essentially this drive has a settings menu which allows the user to scroll through a lot of different parameters and then select and adjust the parameter that they need. So as an example, if you plug in a uh, motor and you have a nameplate on the motor, you need to enter those variables into the drives. So what you do is essentially set the horsepower of the motor, the rated voltage, the rated current, startup time, acceleration, uh, over temperature, overload, uh, protection and things of that nature. And what we're doing today is essentially creating this menu which allows you to scroll through uh, different settings and then uh, set them to whatever you wish, uh, record them in your Arduino and then use them and display them properly on the LCD screen. And of course, everything's done, you know, uh, to the best of standards, we're only updating the screen when a change has been made. I'm gonna be showing you how to do that. I'm gonna be also uh, discussing how to properly, you know, store those values in the arrays that you actually see on your screen right now. I'm gonna be showing you that as well. And like I said, it's just a cool project that's taken from a real world example how things are done on a real uh, variable frequency drive. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, like and uh, subscribe, of course, if you do. And uh, let's get into it. So actually, before we get to the tutorial, I really quickly wanted to address uh, a frequent question that I keep getting. So if I go over to my website, which is eeenthusiast.com, you can see that I made a blog post about a previous video. And the question was that uh, I don't put enough comments in my code. And the answer to that is that I do an extensive kind of overview of the code as well as the circuit itself uh, with, uh, as you can see, some links to important stuff on my blog. And essentially what this, um, what this gives you is a lot more information as to um, how the code actually works. And I, cre and I do this by essentially going over every single thing and then discussing what it does, right? So you have a lot more information on, web on my website. If you wanna go on over and check it out, make sure that that has, you know, some of the answers to your questions. And if that doesn't, you know, leave me in the comments and leave me your question in the comments, I'll be sure to address that. And uh, last but not least, you know, at the end, if you go all the way to the bottom, there's a link to the full software. If I click it, it's gonna bring you over to my GitHub page where you can find you know, the code, the source code, essentially for the sketch, you can download it, do whatever you want with it. And uh, yeah, just been getting a lot of those questions, guys. If you need more information, you wanna find the software, go on over to my website. It should have the latest blog post with more information. So the first step is of course, a quick demo of the circuits. If you wanna bring your attention to the LCD screen below, like I've mentioned, we have 10 different menu screens, which each one of them shows a different parameter, as well as the the setting for that particular parameter. And the first two buttons allow us to scroll between the screens up and down. And the other two buttons allow us to adjust the setting of that said parameter. So a quick notice here is that I do not perform any kind of validation checks. You know, you can't have a negative uh, setting for your amps, but essentially uh, it's just a proof of concept. You can certainly implement that feature in your own uh, circuit if you desire to do so. Let's take a look at the hardware. So I've covered an LCD screen connection before, but I'm connecting on pins two, three, four, and five to the right pins on the LCD. And I'm connecting the enable as well as the read and write pins um, on six and seven. And then I follow up with the four button connections. Obviously the first two are the orange cables right here and the other two are blue. So it's exactly the same connection as I covered in my previous tutorial. All right, so looking at the code, the first thing that we have is an include liquid crystal that H. So that is the LCD screen library that I'm gonna be using, very common. Uh, very easy to set up. I need to declare my LCD on pins two, three, four, five, as I mentioned before, and then six and seven are the enable and read and write pins. You can look more into the library. I'll provide a link below if you're curious as to how that works. But essentially the uh, next step is 
setting up the inputs and the buttons. And this is taken from my video of the previous tutorial. So I literally had to just change this variable to the number of inputs. I have four buttons, which you saw in the demonstration. They are connected on pins eight, nine, 10 and 11. And then I go through the sequence that I explained in the previous tutorial, but essentially it's the flags and the inputs uh, that we discussed as well as a debounce timer and someone suggested moving this to five milliseconds so let's change that to a five uh the lcd menu logic so like i've mentioned we have 10 different menus uh which is stored in this number of screens we have 10 the initial screen as the device loads of course is going to be zero or the first screen and then i have an array of essentially uh, a multi-dimensional uh, multi-dimensional array of the uh, parameter name as well as the parameter uh, sort of uh, setting so i initialize the array to the number of screens so that means 10 and then 2 and uh, each one of those arrays or inner arrays is essentially displaying the top screen as you can see on the LCD screen uh, right there. So motor voltage and the second reading on the second line, you have volts, right? So motor voltage, of course, is represented at volts. And uh, this array is initialized, right? These are constants that you need to kind of set up. There's no way to set them at runtime. So motor current, amps, uh, rated horsepower and horsepower, overload temperature and degrees Celsius etc etc so very simple multi-dimensional array there int parameters i'm actually not using uh yeah i'm using this so the parameters are set up to um kind of control those values so the 10 values that i have on each screen are stored in the parameters and those are integers and the size of that array is of course the number of screens so each screen has an integer which it controls and just as a quick mention, you can retrieve this later on in your program. So for example, if the setting is, you know, 74 degrees or Celsius, for example, then you can retrieve parameter number. Um, so this would be one, two, three. So parameter number three would be your setting for the overload temperature as an example. In the setup, I do the same for loop that we discussed in the previous tutorial to initialize every single input as well as the pull up resistor. We have a serial dot begin. Again, this is this was just to kind of troubleshoot the program. It's no longer needed. I can actually remove that. And LCD dot begin 16 and two. This is the setting to uh, specify that I have an LCD of uh, 16 character length and then two um, rows. In the loop function, so very, very straightforward loop function that has a set input flags and resolve input flag uh, function calls. All right, so if you recall from my previous video, these two functions were also present. And in the first one, what we're doing is essentially the debouncing and the checking for all of our inputs. So in this case, I have four different buttons, as I've mentioned, and we're essentially going through a sequence which checks button zero, one, two, and three. So this for loop is responsible exactly for that. There's of course the bouncing features, again, which I've covered very extensively in the previous tutorial, so I'm not gonna go over that. But essentially we're setting a set of flags to be uh, you know, flagged high and then resolved in the uh, next routine. So once those flags are all set accordingly, we go into the resolve input flags function. So let's take a look at that. And again, this is taken from the previous tutorial, but if we want to resolve the input flags, what we call first. So first of all, we go through each and every flag, right? There's four of them, one for each button. Now uh, we go into this input action uh, function. And this input action function, actually what it does is it takes care of the four flags for the four buttons. So it's very simple. It goes through uh, if input is equal to zero, which zero is my first button here, then one is the next one, two and three, right? So for the four buttons, I need to create an action item and what to do if that button was pressed. Um, so if the first button is being pressed, right, the leftmost uh, button on your screen right now, then I need to essentially decrement uh, the screen sequence. And what that looks like is, uh, so you need to think of two things. So if 
nothing is wrong, right? So if you're at, for example, on the sixth screen, all you need to do is go back to the fifth screen, then to the fourth, third, etc. So here we do uh, decrement simply the current screen uh, selection. But if you're at the lowest most screen, which, uh, which means current screen is equal to zero, then what you want to do is essentially look loop back on the 10th screen. Right, so that's exactly what this function does is if the current screen is equal to zero, which means the lowest value, we go back, we set the current screen equal to the numbers, number of screens minus one. And minus one because we started at zero, so it's not it's 10 screens, but they're numbered zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, if the second button is pressed, right, we want to always increment the screens. So if nothing, if nothing is wrong, then we just increment. So screen zero, then we go to one, two, three, etc. But if we're all the way at the top, we want to loop back and start from the beginning, right? So um, if the current screen is equal to the number of screens minus one, then we go back to screen number zero. Very straightforward. Um, the other two buttons, right? So one of them. Uh, needs to increment the parameter, the other one needs to decrement the parameter. So all I'm doing is passing uh, this uh, button value to my parameter change function and essentially doing a very similar thing. So if key, if one of the keys is pressed, what I'm taking is that array of parameters at the current screen, right? So you have a certain screen that you're on and uh, that's what looks up that parameter array. And then I simply increment this value and with the other button, I decrement the value. So very straightforward. And then the next function is actually being called all the way back here. So resolve input flags. And as you remember, this function sets a flag to being high if a button has been pressed. So none of this code so none of this code will ever execute on your Arduino unless something has been pressed. And that's extremely important because you're essentially saving uh, the bandwidth or the runtime of your Arduino, right? And uh, the last thing that you want to do within this function, right? So you know that a button has been pressed, you know that your current screen uh, has been resolved and that your parameter change has been resolved within this function. So the last thing you want to do is update your screen, which is exactly what this function does. So print screen is being called after everything else, everything else has been resolved and your program knows exactly what the parameters are. So let's scroll back down to this print screen function and discuss it. So the print screen function does a couple of uh, fairly straightforward things, but uh, yet needs to be uh, gone over. So the first thing that we do is clear the LCD. So that removes all of the characters that are currently on the screen. Uh, then we print screens, current screens zero. So if you remember, the screens array is a multidimensional array, which first contains the, so essentially it's the name of the screen, and then it, it has the parameter value. So this reference, right, goes back to screens, current screens zero, so this first reference is gonna print motor voltage or motor current, depending on which screen you are currently on, acceleration time, etc. And uh, yeah, so it's and it takes the first the first element of the inner array, right? So as I've explained, it's gonna print the first line on the LCD screen. The second thing, uh, or the next thing that we do is we set the cursor at a zero one. What this does essentially set at it sets the cursor at the first at the zeroth element of the second row, right? So this is just an LCD function. And then we print, first of all, the parameter, right? So if we go back up, so the first thing that we do is we print the parameter, which is an array of all of the parameters for each screen, there's going to be one. And again, this is the parameter of the current screen. So we want to make sure that we track that accurately. So whatever the current screen is, it's going to retrieve that parameter from the array. Then obviously we have a space. And last but not least, we go back to the screens array and we print the second, uh, the second element of the inner array, which is essentially the, um, the value for our parameter. So for example, if you look at your screen right now, what I have here is motor current and it's four amps. This is, you know, the first screen is motor, uh, motor current. And then on the second screen, I want to print the apps. So this is uh, a good structure to use because you can really easily visualize what you're dealing with. You have this array 
of you know the same values and you can you don't get confused if you create two different arrays then it just becomes too uh difficult to manage and unfortunately arduino doesn't allow you to create uh arrays of different types and what i mean by that is uh for example in swift or um, uh, other languages you can create not just a pure string array but you can put uh you know what's called a tuple uh which means you could create a string and then the value and then the uh, another string and then it makes it really uh, easier to keep track you wouldn't need this parameter array essentially but in either case uh, this allows you to print this very nice uh, setting for your Arduino and kind of build up on a menu that you would see in real life applications as I've mentioned before uh, so hopefully you've uh, understood what I was trying to explain here you're going to be building some projects we're going to uh, that are going to require this parameter settings uh, and uh, I certainly am and I'm going to be reusing this code as is as I've demonstrated you guys um, a lot of your code needs to be sort of uh, decoupled from your program so this one uh, is taken directly from my previous program and it's you know just literally a copy paste and then change to the number of inputs and it's done in a fashion that uh, kind of corresponds to good uh, practices in software development. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you've enjoyed the content, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. I also want you to check out the description and a couple of links that I left for you with uh, extra content. Last but not least, leave me a comment if you have any suggestions for next videos, questions about this topic or otherwise. Uh, thank you once again for watching and see you next time.